Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the build of the Aviation Design Diamond airplane. Um, thanks so much for tuning in guys. If this is your first time finding my channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, give the video a thumbs up, and we will uh, get into this uh, build video of this uh, amazing airplane. All right guys, in this video, we are gonna be focusing uh, primarily on the wings. Uh, we're going to get the landing gear mounted in the wing, in the nose, and uh, we're also going to get the wing all wired up. Now, we do have a set of uh, a Sky Candy lights coming for this plane. They're going to be phenomenal. Can't wait to unbox those and show them to you guys. They're going to be nuts. Um, so we have to make those provisions in the wing, but I know exactly what I need to run in order for that to happen. So um, that's not a problem, but we'll keep that in mind as we go through this, uh, this wing construction. So that's the plan for this video, guys. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so I'm just going to mount the front gear on the nose just because I took it off and I'm here and it's easy to do. Um, we'll probably, have to, I, we might have to take it off again uh, as we route wires and things like that, but uh, maybe not. Anyways, um, so I just cleaned up the holes a little bit, put four of these uh, blind nuts in there. And then to fasten the gear, you use the uh, the angle head screws because those recess nicely into the gear themselves. All right, guys, there is the inside. The speckles are all dry, and uh, I think it looks really, really good. Happy with the finish, and you can see with the tanks in there how much of it actually gets covered up. So, but uh, looks good. Happy with it. Okay, so we got the front gear installed and that uh, went together quite simple. Um, the reason I wanted to put the gear in was I just want to figure out where we're going to run these wires. So my thinking is up on the side of the, uh, the nose gear well uh, wall, I want to put a hole um, in the side of the wall there and route the wires through the hole, probably kind of in the midway point is my thinking. Um, I'm just gonna play around with that and see, we need to leave a little bit of uh, movement in the wire for the servo, for the front nose gear. So there are some things we need to think about when we do that. All right guys, so we wanna put an equipment tray. I wanna put an equipment tray up front. Um, it's a good place to put stuff because we want to put the UAT up there so it's a direct line from the tanks and uh, lots of good reasons to put that up there. So the way we're going to work this is we're going to put two hardwood blocks glued down there and then on the front of the tray we've got those little grooves. We are going to glue some carbon dowels on the board. Like that and uh, so to get this in you'll slip in the front because we'll put some holes in the front uh, nose gear area so you'll drop the front in and the back will screw in because we've got decent access to the back so what I'm using for this obviously is a couple carbon dowels they're hollow um, this piece of basswood that I had was like almost the exact right size I just had to cut off about a an eighth of an inch but the nice thing about the basswood is it's uh, um, I was thinking about using ply, but a piece of ply this size is actually heavier and um, a little bit of girth in the front is fine for, I mean, when I say girth, I mean depth. I'm not looking for a bunch of extra weight, but uh, I don't know. It's just I had it. It worked out good. It was nice and solid. It's light. And um, I think we'll also be doing a cutout for a UAT in here because I want my UAT to sit in here at a bit of an angle. Um, so anyways, this, this just worked out good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue those carbon dowels on and glue the, uh, the, uh, blocks on as well too. All right, guys, we have set the, uh, the fuselage aside. So it, uh, the stuff we glued in there can dry and the, uh, the front tray is sitting here. So that's all curing and doing its thing. And now we've got the left wing on the table. So I just uh, put the uh, the gear in there just to kind of see how it fits. Um, I've had some people comment that uh, check the fit because it doesn't line up properly. 
This particular one looks really, really good. Looks like everything lines up really well. We're kind of roughly in the bolt holes there. So um, that should work out good on that side at least. Um, I am gonna treat the uh, the woodwork in here. So the uh, all the woodwork inside the wheel well, I'll, uh, I'll treat with epoxy. Um, first thing I'm gonna do on this wing is I'm going to um, drill and thread the uh, the the tip tanks so i'm just going to use a two and a half millimeter drill bit uh, drill through both of the pre-drilled holes there and then we'll uh, we'll thread the carbon rods that come in um, off the tip tanks I'm going to, uh, to tap these with a three and a half millimeter or three millimeter Allen key as well. So I'm just going to put some threads in there so we can put a, uh, a nice bolt in there. Probably put some CA in there afterwards. All right, so I didn't show you guys the before picture, but there was a bit of a gap on the uh, the tip tank to the wing, t uh, the wing itself. So again, I just sanded down the, uh, the, the joint on the wing and then the, the, the fit is much, much better there. So we have no more gap on the front edge there. So, all right guys, so the whole fastening system for the tip tanks worked out really well. Um, I actually ended up using 440 um, hardware instead of the three millimeter stuff, just cause the threads are a bit more aggressive and the diameter is a little bit smaller. Uh, so threading the carbon uh, tube there was a bit easier. So, and then what I did is I used a larger drill bit and just drilled a countersink in there. So what happens when we tighten these down is the bolts are completely recessed. I'm gonna put this tip tank on and I'll show you guys what that ends up looking like. Uh, it's pretty slick. All right, so there's the final shot there of the tip tank fastening system. Now, of course, you could glue these in, but I don't think that's a really good idea. I mean, if you ever have a rough landing and you wreck your, your tip tank, you'd be able to order another one from Aviation Design um, or fix it, right? And it's going to be a lot easier to fix or replace if it's not permanently fastened to the, to the wing. So uh, we do have some lighting stuff that's going on the tip tank. I'm not going to share that with you yet, exactly what we're doing, but we do have to uh, put some servo leads through. We'll do that through the front here. Reason for that is the channel to the rest of the wiring goes right down the front edge. Um, so that's the best place for us to put the wires going through. So, but uh, for now, we are good with what we've done there and uh, that worked out awesome. All right, guys, next thing I'm gonna do is mix up some 30 minute epoxy and thin it out and then treat the, the wood on both wings. <laughs> All right, so for running the wires, first step is we have to take the servo uh, covers and servos off, put them on the bench. So next thing we're gonna do is we need to put a hole here for the light setup. Now this hole, uh, just something to think about in this kit is the um, tubes for the wing tip tanks aren't going like this, they're perpendicular to the edge of the wing, right? So they go like this. So there's plenty of room in the front section there. So we're just gonna put a little hole there. We just need to fit two uh, servo cables through that hole. So it does not need to be big. And uh, those go to the front of the wing, so straight down. Uh, the servo lines, let's check the diagram. So the flap servo needs to come towards the tip join up with this other servo, the aileron servo, and then come out and go towards that portion of the wing. So love these schematic diagrams. Thank you Aviation Design for doing that. That's awesome. Um, and then of course the gear and the brake do that route right there. So I'm gonna get all those lines run. And uh, once those are run, we'll probably slip that gear in and uh, check and make sure it works good. All right guys, so what I've done is, this is kind of my normal process. I've run strings for everything. Now I use this flexible wire, I think it's fencing wire, 
and it works great because you can bend it and it's flexible and it's uh, just easy to work with. So anyways, I've run a string from here to there. I've run a string for the gear one going all the way around. And then right now I've got a piece of that wire coming through the aileron and the tail end of it's back there. And I'm just gonna run um, my servo lines. I just basically have my big long piece of servo line hooked up to here. We're gonna run it over there and then uh, just cut off the, uh, the servo line as we need it. All right, so just continuing to wire up the, uh, the right wing here. Um, I just covered the brake line with a snakeskin material, so that's going to protect it. And then I will zip tie the, uh, the brake line to the actual gear itself. And where it's going to go in the gear is right here on the side of the actual landing gear. There's little channels, hopefully you can see that, little channels on the side of the gear mounts and that's where the uh, the brake line should be able to fit through. All right guys, so I ended up using shrink wrap on this upper section and I think that makes for a nice clean install. Um, I guess I could use it on the lower section but I have to take the entire system apart and I don't really feel like doing that, so. I initially used zip ties up here but then I remembered I had a bunch of large shrink wrap so uh, that's what I used there. Now the one thing with this Beotech gear is it talks about it in the manual, but if your gear actually retracts this way over top of the uh, the motor system, you have to be very careful. There's very little clearance in this area. I actually have this set up on my Tudor where the legs come back this way and you basically have zero clearance here. Okay, the gear is installed. It's not bolted down yet. As I'm sliding this gear system in, I'm making sure that I pull the cables just to make sure that there's no binding of the cables in this area and they have a nice flow through. And that worked out quite well. We've got a lot of excess cable. I'm going to probably just keep this cable in here in case this gear needs to come out. We need these lines to be able to travel back that direction and uh, have enough clearance to get this out. Now neither the gear or the actual leg itself is bolted in. So I'm going to bolt the gear into the airframe, leave the leg loose. Later on, once this is connected to the airframe and we extend this gear, we'll need to check and make sure that there's no binding with the brake system and also this cable coming down. We may have to sand this part of the, the opening or we may zip tie this over to make sure we have enough clearance. All right, there's the gear bolted in. I did have to open up the holes a little bit on the back side just to make sure that there was enough clearance for the bolt to go in, otherwise it was pushing on the skin. So I just took my X-Acto blade and uh, opened those up a little bit. So gears bolted in, leg is still loose, but we'll address that later on. Next step, I'm gonna put connector ends on the two surfaces and we will get the surfaces or the servos for the surfaces put back in place. And before I put the servo in, I just wanted to show you guys that I am switching the shrink wrap, which isn't sticking very well, to uh, a piece of Tigon fuel tubing on the, uh, the clevis. I think that's gonna work better and it's more solid and it's more what I'm uh, used to using. All right guys, time to connect all of these wires to the connectors. So the way I'm gonna set this up is I'm gonna have the gear, brake, flap, and aileron through the 12 pin connector. I'm gonna have the lights through the nine pin connector using three and three. So I'll have a spare three pins uh, in case there's any future changes to the light setup or anything like that. So we're gonna do one of these on each wing. So that's how things are gonna get wired. This is kind of a boring process. It's basically cutting the wires, stripping the wires, putting all the connectors in, putting them in the connectors. So I'll show you how I'm going to connect all this stuff and show you how to crimp one of these just in case you're curious. So I'm gonna put the female connector on the wing itself. Now there's a couple reasons why I like to put the female connector on the wing. The primary reason is 
you've got these pins that stick out like this inside the connector. So once I get these connectors on, conceivably, I could take a servo lead, plug it onto those pins, and be able to operate and check the surfaces, like the gear and the flaps and ailerons and all that stuff. So that's why I like to put those the female connector with the pin sticking out on the wing side because then I can do stuff without having the plane completely wired up. So I'm going to do this connector on the wing, but we're going to use the two pin connector and do the light setup first. So first thing you need to do is strip the wires. You want to strip about one to two millimeters off of the wire and I use these smaller, uh, this is a Klein Tool brand, but smaller wire strippers. So they've got all the tiny size. The ones that you find for household use usually have a lot bigger size. So these are the right ones for RC applications. So the way I crimp these guys is, obviously having good crimpers is an important thing. I got these from DreamWorks down in the US. I do these pins a little bit different than I do the power box ones. The power box ones I put right near the end. These guys, I go in just slightly. So when I do these pins, I set it in there. And these guys, I do th three clicks. Now that holds the pin in there. I'll show you the other side. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the wire in on this side and we're looking on the other side there. Okay, so we're gonna put the wire in, looking through the other side. Now when you look through the other side, you can see when the wire's in the clamped area. Once it's there, give it a squish all the way down, they release. And that's how we crimp these. Now the reason I put the connector in a little bit further, if you put the connector all the way to the end, just the way this connector is designed, the other side of the crimpers, because it's sitting in there too far, it actually bends these connectors a little bit and they're difficult to put in. So that's a finished connection. So the first area here is what crimps the sheathing. And the second area is what crimps the wire itself and provides the connection. So here's a view of the connector itself. So you can see the first smaller crimp area crimps the sheathing. The second crimp area crimps the wire and provides the connection. All right, now we've got three connectors done and this is light number two. So we are going to install this into spot number two. So all you have to do is take the connector. Hi Luna. Pop it in all the way. And it clicks. Give it a little tug and it's nice and solid. All right, so the connectors are all finished. We just kept them both separate. All the extra for the gear is uh, just sitting inside there. And uh, if we have to pull the gear out, that will uh, facilitate that option. I probably could have cut that a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hook up the receiver and gear control and everything. I'm gonna extend this gear and just tighten snug down the uh, the actual uh, mounting bolts for the strut. All right, so we've got everything just kind of temporarily hooked up here. Um, again, that's why I like the pins sticking out on this connector because you can connect with a servo line to whatever you need to do. Now you need to be attentive as to which direction is which because there's no um, because there's no alignment system so you could mess that up. Anyways we've got this all connected 
what we're going to do is turn on, the radio is on, we're going to turn on the receiver and we're going to extend this gear and see how that all works. Now I just want to be careful that we don't catch anything here. So I'm going to give it a flick. Here we go. Awesome. Now at this point, I can't adjust the toe in and get an accurate measurement. Reason for that is the angle of the, the wing is not flush because the fuselage isn't straight. So I'm just gonna snug these up, kind of give it a, a just a, a rough snug just so I have an idea of where it needs to go. And that will allow me to make sure everything works and make sure everything's adjusted. My primary concern right now is that this brake line doesn't interfere with the way the gear works. Now one point to be aware of guys, and this is why I go through this process, is with these pinch bolts on the gear, we can't actually access the bottom one with this gear installed. So I do need to pull this gear out and we do need to tighten the pin inside the trunnion um, for its final tightening and not worry about this leg at this point. So what I'm going to do is pull the gear out, slide it out, do up the trunnion bolts with Loctite and then we'll get it reinserted. All right, so everything's reinstalled. We are just going to check and make sure that the gear works properly. So that looks great. I'm just going to take my Dremel and just flatten off that angle a little bit right there just to prevent that from ever catching the brake line and that keeps things nice and simple. So just trying a little bit different routing of the cable guys. See if that uh, works any better with just going inside the airframe. All right, I'm gonna make some more minor adjustments to that cable, but I like that it's uh, I like it on this side of the trunnion better at this point, but I think I'm going to route it on the back side of the actual trailing link leg. So what I mean by that is I think I'm going to route it on the back side here, and then it'll come down and around to that area. So I'm going to make that change. Have to undo those zip ties and we'll see how that works. All right, so I think that's pretty much it, guys. That uh, worked out good. So we've got the cable running on the back of the trailing link, comes across, and when we add flex to this, this is all solid, and all of our flex is right there. I'm gonna probably tighten up that uh, the shrink tubing a little bit if I can, but that should work beautifully. We got lots of clearance underneath the tire. The only thing that would make that a little bit better is if I took some stainless steel wire and tied it right there, but I don't think we need to do that. All right, so here's the final gear routing that I came up with, guys. So we come up the back of the strut, two zip ties around there, put some adhesive on the zip ties so they don't move. And then we come around to the other side and then up and then through the shrink wrap. So this is what I did on the other wing and it worked out awesome. All right guys, the wing is all wired up except the main bundle area. So let's give this a try and see if it works. Whoa, and just like that guys, it is done. Success. 
All right, the wing portion of everything has been wired and uh, it worked out just like I thought it would. I'm gonna hook my receiver up to this gear just to make sure that everything retracts properly and everything works properly and we need the gear sitting inside the wing, not sitting out like that. All right, the other thing I did guys and you OCD folk out there will notice, I painted the cover. So it's a little hint different to white, but it looks better than being all orange because now the five is complete. All right guys, so I talked a little bit about putting a hole for the cables on the front end in the side wall of the, the box in there that's encasing the, uh, the front gear. Um, but I gave it some thought over a few days and we have this nice hole right there. So my suggestion sometimes guys is if you have an idea in your head and if you have that little bit of a feeling that maybe says that this doesn't quite feel right or I don't, I'm not 100% sure I want to do that, stop and give it some thought because uh, when I thought about that hole, that was a few days ago and then a few days after that, I had the epiphany, I guess if you want to call it that, that there's this lovely hole right in the front of that whole bulkhead nose piece which is designed to run all the stuff through it so it's going to save me putting a hole in the side of that uh, the front gearbox and it just makes sense to run it that way because if we ever take this nose piece off um, it's disconnectable right it, it's all right there so anyways it just more, it makes more sense to do that so I'm going to pull this nose uh, cone thing off and then just figure that stuff out. It was definitely a successful episode, guys. We got the gear mounted in the nose and the wings. We got the uh, the tip tanks mounted and threaded. We got the wing wiring done, which is a huge step. It's a lot of time, not a lot of video time for you guys, but it is a lot of time to get that done. I showed you guys how to crimp the ash lock connectors. That crimping system transfers over to crimping regular servo leads and connectors. So you can use that for any crimping on your RC plane and it works beautifully. If you have any questions regarding that, make sure you list them down below. I can do a separate video completely on that, but I think I was pretty thorough on the, the crimping portion. So hopefully you guys got some information out of that and it helps you in the future. All right, guys, that is everything. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Aviation Design Diamond Build. If you have any questions, guys, list them down below. If you have not done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. It's free to do so. When you do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We will see you in the next video. Thank you.